Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. He's one of the nation's favourite comedians. And last year, he reached the pinnacle of showbiz. He won Celebrity Big Brother. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Julian Clary. <laughs> See you again. You. Oh, boy, look at that, it's a Perspex bow tie. I've seen most things, I've never seen a Perspex bow tie before. Oh, it's very handy, you know, you don't have to tie it or anything. Wow, you it's quite Rinse something. it under the tap. Oh. <laughs> uh, Julian, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. It's always lovely to have you on the show. I always enjoy spending time with you. And I believe you, you missed a big party to be here this evening. Well, I've delayed my attendance at the party. Okay. Uh, this week, my Auntie Tess uh, was 100. Wow, 100 years old. Well, congratulations. So, thank you. That's for Auntie yeah. Tess. Yes, you. So, we, there's been... It's a kind of three-day rave going on. We, um, <laughs> we had a party where she lives in Brentford yeah. yesterday, and... Tonight, the party has started at my house with all of the family and, um, and it will carry on tomorrow. Well, that's, and she's got a picture of the Queen there? Yes, that's what you get for your trouble when you live to be 100. Oh, so you still get a picture? So what, you get a letter from them? I thought they'd stop doing that. No, you get a, you get a sort of hand-delivered card, personally signed by Her Majesty. And interestingly, at the party uh, the other day, with all of her friends who are of an age, they all... Um, the, the, photo, the, the card was passed around and they all wanted their picture taken, holding it, That's you so know, sweet. as if they were 100. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them were a mere 85. They were nothing. <laughs> Just babies. Yes. Uh, you know, you've been um, a comedian not for 25 years now? I've been around the block, Jonathan. 25 years. OK, yeah. and I would think, though, that, I mean, people my age and our generation, we all know you as a stand-up comedian first and foremost, but there'll be younger people who, who kind of know you because of your appearance on Celebrity Big Brother, I guess. Yes, yes. I mean, did you get a new fan base? Did you find new people finding out about you because they? I did, because I did a tour straight after I came out of the house, and that was quite good timing. So I, I did notice, same as when I did um, Strictly Come Dancing, I got a lot of silver-haired ladies, which were very welcome. Um, and now I had sort of youths and uh, young people that watch Big Brother. So I do like it when I'm on stage and you look out and there's, you know, your gay and lesbian contingent, and then there's the, the Strictly lot, and now there's the sort of young people. It's very cheery. But you know, uh... I remember the night I was hosting the Comedy Awards back in the 90s. And you oh, came here we go. And you made that famous comment, and mm. it was very funny. It made me laugh a lot about Norman Lamont. A joke, clearly a joke. Yeah. Well, at least I hope it was a joke. I don't know. Um, uh, but, and I didn't realise at the time that that would have quite the effect it did on your career, at least temporarily. Mm. Um, Norman Lamont was, uh, had come out and given an award beforehand, perversely. He was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, wasn't so he? So he was about as well-known a politician as we had, mm. short of our leaders. And then Julian was next up. You came out afterwards. Mm. Norman Lamont was, was... I didn't like him, you know, and he was a sort of very... <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, what the earth is he doing? While I was waiting for all the endless awards, while I was waiting to come on, I got more worked up about the fact that this sort of right-wing Tory was at a comedy awards show. And um, by the time I came on stage, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry I'm late, everyone. Um, I've been fisting Norman Lamont. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those things that follow, it's, now it's followed me around, and I know when I die this will be on my obituary. But I was curious about, because at the time I didn't realise, and I've had a, a run in with being silly myself, occasionally maybe going a bit too far, and knowing the impact it can have. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and you realise afterwards, well, you didn't mean it in any way to have that kind of an impact, and I, I'm sure you didn't think it would. So afterwards, how was it with you dealing with that? I mean, what kind of a, an experience was it for you? Well, I mean, in retrospect, I look back at it now, and because my diary was suddenly cleared, um, I think everything happens for a reason. This is my take on it, that, that I probably I needed some time off and I needed a bit of a break. So the powers of the universe caused me to say this outrageous thing yeah. and uh, suddenly um, I was able to rest. I mean, I, there was a lot going on in my life at the time. The, the, my, my boyfriend that I was living with had just died of HIV-related illness and uh, so had my best friend. And I was, I'm not making excuses, but I was taking a lot of Valium. But you know, I don't think many people knew that. Time. I didn't know that you were going through such a dark no, time it and such wasn't, a difficult time. And I can understand why you wouldn't broadcast that, but it, it must have been incredibly difficult for you and to still go out and have to perform while that was going on. Yes, I think just before that had happened, I think Christopher had died about a year before, and um, I remember taking his ashes to Portugal, because we used to like Portugal, to scatter them on this beach we used to know. And uh, so I went to Portugal and... Uh, set the urn there and the candles all around and uh, it was kind of dark and everything but it was all the moment was happening and uh, 
that I heard a rustling behind me and I turned around and uh, there was a Portuguese man masturbating. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, Christopher would have quite liked that. <laughs> he, would have, he would have been amused, I think. <laughs> well, it, it's a memorable thing. Mm. And then who would have thought then, what, fast forward uh, 20 years and you're on Strictly Come Dancing and you win a whole new fan base there, you win Celebrity Big Brother, I mean, and your career is perhaps stronger and more, more sort of, uh, I would have thought for you, more comfortable than ever before. Yes, I think if you're tenacious as we are, you know, <laughs> you just kind of keep going and, and diversify. So I don't, I mean, I write, I write books as well, I write yeah. novels and, um, and you do a bit of just a minute and you just kind of, spread yourself around so that it's not just relentless um, filth on one level. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you then about the, the new tour, because you're back on the road next Sunday, I believe. Next Sunday in Jersey and onward for the next six weeks. It's called Position Vacant, Apply Within. So the... <laughs> so the... Uh, but the title means something more than just... It's, you're actually in a part of the tour, you're looking for someone. Is this correct? Yes, I mean, that's, that's the kind of conceit of the show, because I, I do have a partner, but um, he is getting on my nerves. <laughs> he, he's, he works very hard, you know, and he's, he gets up at 6.30 in the morning when I'm in bed and comes back after midnight when I'm back in bed. Well, so what does he do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something in an office. But, I mean, he, for the last six months, he's not seen me standing up. And um, <laughs> from his point of view... I'm, no, I'm just this prone figure under, you know, it's like living with the Turin shroud, I think. <laughs> so I'm just a bit cross. So I thought this is a kind of veiled threat to go out looking for a husband every night. And I, I, I select men from the audience in the theatre and, and herd them into a kind of um, sheep pen. And <laughs> then they audition to be my husband. And at the end of the evening, I marry one of them. Wow. And there's a rather beautiful ceremony with a bishop and everything. The people who you round up yes. and the individual who's lucky enough to be married to the end, he knows this isn't a lasting commitment. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's what's called a load of old nonsense. You know, it's, it's kind of camp comedy. It's a it's comic fun. device to improvise with people I, in the audience. I believe you have uh, a cattle prod. I do have a cattle prod. <laughs> that, this is... Uh, <laughs> the sort of item you have to round them up. It's recreated for me, and it, it does give a mild electric okay, shock. OK, do I want this? Hang on. <laughs> ah. OK. Um, there's nothing to worry about, but it can cause numbness below the waist um, <laughs> in the over 50s. <laughs> OK, well, we thought it might be fun to see if there's any candidates in our audience this evening. <laughs> He'll be uh, back trying to find a new partner, but for now, would you say thank you to Mr Julian Clary? Thank you very much. Thank you. Join me after the break when I'll be joined by two of my favourite actors and band members of Spandabelly, Carrie and Martin Kemp. See you in a second.